Hello designers, this is Karthik from Design School for WordPress Beginners, the place where I teach you how to design, build and customize your websites. If you are new here, consider subscribing. Let's get into the video. This video is a part of playlist called Elementor Basics in which we discuss everything about Elementor. So if you are new to Elementor, check out the playlist. I have already made a video for beginners to get started with Elementor. So you, che you can check that out before watching this video. Without any further ado, let's get into the video. In this video, let's discuss about the heading widget. Typography is really important for WordPress websites. It gives structure to your website design and also adds personality to your website. So this is one of the most used widgets in Elementor and let's go ahead and start learning about it. To start with, I have a section with minimum height of 400 pixels. So I just click on my widgets button or you can also click on this plus button and click and drag heading widget into the blue outline. Just like that your heading will be added to your Elementor design. So you can change the content from here and if you click on something else such as this section or anything else and if you want to come back to editing this content you can right click and click on edit or you can simply click on that and it brings the contextual options for that particular widget. You can also click on this and also open navigator. So if you want to navigate through the website you can simply keep on clicking from the navigator interface. I just click on my heading widget and change the content so I'll just say this is my heading. So you can type any content that you want in here and if you have the pro version you have the option to link this title to a dynamic field. What are dynamic fields? Well it gets the data from WordPress database so you don't have to enter anything. This can be even a special character. Anything and everything that you have for this text will be actually replaced by the data that you pick from dynamic field. Let me show that. So as you can see I just typed a dollar sign into the text area. Let me click on dynamic and let me click on post title. And just like that without even me having to type anything it will pull the data of this. It says elementary demo. It's the name of the template that I gave for this particular template. So it's actually pulling the data of the current post or current page and it will populate the field with that. So that's what this dynamic does. If I close it, I go back to my dollar sign. So let's actually switch it to our heading. So I will say this is my heading. Let's actually link it to something else. If I link it to post title, it will pull post title. If I link it to post time, it will pull the data when I posted this and so on. There are a lot of options that you can pick from. So if I click on author name, it brings up the name of the author that created this particular template. So it's me. So it just shows that. So that's what this dynamic field does. And under link, you can type or paste link of any page. Or if you know the title of a page, simply type it and there'll be suggestions. You can simply link it to any page. You also have dynamic options for links. So you can link it to various things. You can link it to pop-ups, you can link it to open light boxes and so on. And under size, you have an option to pick the size for your de default heading. So you can make it small like that, medium, large or even go all the way up to XXL. This HTML tag helps search engines and your users better understand the hierarchy of your content. So by default, the page title will be h1 and if you're having anything else any subheading you must go for h2 that's what it selected for me and the next subheading should have h3 by doing so we'll maintain hierarchy and search engines will better understand what our content is all about so you can simply change it to h4 and notice when i change it to h4 there's no change in the size that's because we've set the size to xxl let's pick default and you can see that it sets my h4 size to whatever value that h4 holds it actually inherits from my theme so if i choose span paragraph it will give values default values for that and if you want to actually make it big just click on these sizing options you can also align your text justify it you can also change alignment per device so if you want a different alignment for tablet there you go and if you want a different alignment for mobile 
there you go it's that easy you can enter as much content as you want so you can say this is my paragraph text you can paste it this basically stands for text it's not just for heading you can also change the size from here xxl or you can set it to default and you can also change style from the style tab so we're done with the content tab let's move on to the style tab starting with the text color so you can pick any color that you want it's quite explanatory typography helps you change all the various aspects of your text notice when i hover over this text you can see a blue outline showing me what the widget is all about so this blue outline where my cursor actually is is showing me that the container of the text is this so this will change when we change various properties in typography so let's actually change the size and as i increase the size you can see that the blue outline surrounding the text increases as well so when i make it bigger the blue outline becomes bigger so you can change the text in pixels or in relative value so you can change it to 2 rems to ems 2 rems or a lot more we'll discuss about units later but these are relative units relative to font size that your browser value is so you can set your text size in pixels so let's actually set it to 16 pixels or let's actually increase it to 19 pixels so you can also change the weight of the text it's basically how thick or how dense your text should be so text should have a decent weight and it also depends on your typography various kinds of fonts so various fonts will support various font weights for instance i have this font called pacifico and it only supports few font weights so it won't support 100 there are only few values that it supports so it supports 600 it doesn't support 900 as you can see few fonts don't support all the font weights so depending on the font that you're using you can pick the weight not all fonts support all font weights so you can go with 300 maybe or make it light with 100 as you can see this font doesn't change when i actually change the font weight to 100 so let's actually change this to default so style will change the way your letters are represented italic well it italicizes your text <laughs> that's what it is and you can also choose decoration for your text let's actually make it black always make sure that your text is readable and mostly the black and white combination works perfect for typography so when you're using typography of course you don't want the this black maybe you can pick a lighter version of black something of this sort you can also pick that from your theme colors so click on this and you can pick any text decoration so if you want to decorate your text for some reason you can decorate that or no decoration at all and for now always use line height 1.5 so if you don't set the line height properly so let's actually screw this up intentionally so if i set my line height to 12 pixels when my line height is actually less than the font size you can see that the text becomes unreadable you want to avoid this so in order to do that simply give a value more than you can also set it to 1 em and that will make the line height equal to text size so whenever you increase the text size the line height will be the same it's always a good idea also to add a ratio so if you are following typographic scales you can include the same ratio in here you can also adjust the letters spacing from here and it's per device so if you want to set different font sizes for different devices you can do that just click on tablet and set a different font size for tablet click on mobile and set a different font size for mobile by doing so you design responsive typography with text shadow you can make your text look like a 3d form of text so let's do that 
let us pick a color for our text so I'll actually go ahead and pick a color and let me click on text shadow again let's pick a color for our text shadow I'll reduce the blur to 0 I'll click this again and as I move the horizontal and vertical positioning of the shadow you can see that it adds that neat little 3d effect to my text so let's actually pick a darker version and as you can see here it looks like a 3d text you can adjust these values and it will look as if it's having a reflection and that will add that neat little 3d effect to your text and coming to blend mode this is one of the recently added features and it's really helpful and it's so much fun when I change blend mode nothing happens that's because the section that this widget is doesn't have any color or anything so that it can use this blend mode so let's add background to the section so that we can see blend modes in effect so I'll just click on this remove all the effects I'll set the font color to the default one you can pick any color let's click on the section that this heading widget is in let's start with a standard color so let's pick a black one how about that so when you click on black one and let's click on the heading widget again let's start playing with the blend modes so based on the pixel difference it calculates the color and changes the color of this particular text and when I chose luminosity you can see the text color is changed and the when the background changes the color of this text changes and based on the background the color of this text changes this is actually a CSS feature so let's change the background again we'll change it to a gradient and now let's play with the blend modes so when you click on multiply it'll have a different color overlay darken color dodge exclusion hue luminosity and when you have a background image it also works with background image it's always a good idea to choose a background color as a fallback for your background image so in case your image fails to load user will at least see a decent background color it's better than seeing a plain gray background so when I changed the background to image let's click on the text again and I change the text color to green and when I change various values you can see those neat little effects so when I click on difference you can see different kind of effects applied to the text color even though it's green CSS filters will calculate the values that it needs to display and it just adjusts the values like that so when I pick luminosity it will add that transparent effect and you click on darken it will do something else screen and so on you can also play with a lot of these values and settle with the one I think difference looks better so it's like the paint going all the way in the text so you can use blend modes there's also an article from Elementor themselves so I'll leave a link to that so you can learn how to use blend modes and it's basically trial and error so based on your background just play with your text color and blend mode and you'll see various effects it's that simple here's another blend mode that I've created so I just picked the background gradient tweaked few values changed the angle picked different colors for my background and when you change the text color you can see various effects so that need little coloring effect maybe here 
and you can also change these values saturation color exclusion overlay and you can play with different types of values you can also use these blend modes in conjunction with on hover effects filters and a lot more you can also use them with your motion effects so for instance if i've added this gradient normally and when i change on hover gradient you can see the kind of effect it produces so just like that my text changes its color and it adds that neat little effect let's change it back to normal and let's actually add motion effect so as i've added this gradient to my section that has this heading widget you can go ahead and add scrolling effects so let's pick the scrolling effect that we need so if we add vertical scroll let's match that with horizontal scroll let's pick the speed for each let's click vertical scroll and let's and you can see the kind of effect that it's adding to a text right there you can also add transparency so you can see a lot of possibilities in here we'll discuss blend modes in detail later but these are some of the possibilities css blend modes so there's a ton of possibility with elementor heading widget and use it with your imagination i'll talk to you guys in the next video and make sure you check out the elementor basics playlist it has a ton of videos to help you learn a lot about elementor i'll talk to you in the next video peace and that's it for now and hope you guys like this video if you did make sure to give a thumbs up subscribe to the channel and let me know what you guys think in the comments down below and if you need anything else don't hesitate to ask i'm ready to help you catch you in the next video peace